Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, going to finish off the week really strong. We're going to go over the latest injury report, talk about some roster moves, plus what to look for from a couple individuals and what I'll be looking for from the team on Sunday as they host the Patriots at Allegiant Stadium. Your calls and texts will close out the show. It's all coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, Friday, December 16th, 2022. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And welcome here, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the Locked On Raider podcast free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. My man Ari is doing a great job making sure we're up on YouTube each and every day. And appreciate everyone who checks it out for two minutes, three minutes, 25 minutes, whatever the case may be. Appreciate the time that you have with us either on the podcast or on YouTube or on both. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the show. We got a lot to get to on Matter of fact, let's start off with the injury report from Thursday. We'll get another one later on today. And then 90 minutes before kickoff, we'll find out who's in and who's out. For the Raiders, the injury report wasn't too bad. Only a couple guys didn't participate, but it was a couple guys that you'd like to see out there participate and you think that the Raiders are going to need on Sunday and the rest of the season, to be 100% honest with you. Guard Alex Bars and cornerback Rock Yassine, both those guys dealing with knee injuries. Both those guys did not participate. They didn't participate on Wednesday or Thursday, and I don't expect to see them play on Sunday. For the most part, everyone else was limited. Andrew Billings with the fibula injury, Jermaine Illuminor with the oblique and wrist, Josh Jacobs with the quad and the hand, Denzel Perryman with the hip injury. All those guys were limited, and the guys that participated fully, Dylan Parham with the knee injury, Sam Webb with the illness on Wednesday, but fully participated on Thursday, and then Malcolm Kuntz with the knee injury. Wasn't listed on Wednesday, fully participated on Thursday, so it sounds like he tweaked something, but was still good to go. So not too bad for the Raiders, but... I think Alex Bars and Rocky Scene are two guys that the Raiders really do need out there on Sunday and, again, moving forward the rest of the season. As far as the Patriots goes, they have more guys that didn't participate, four of them to be exact. Quarterback Jack Jones with a knee injury, wide receiver Devontae Parker dealing with a concussion, running back Ramondre Stevenson with an ankle injury, and offensive lineman Isaiah Wynn with a foot injury. All those guys have been out since, uh, well, Wednesday and Thursday. They were out and probably won't play on Sunday, but we'll see. Again, we'll get another injury report a little bit later on. This afternoon, as far as guys that were limited, uh, defensive lineman Christian Barmore with a knee injury. Look, man, he, he can come back week 16. Just go ahead and skip this one. Let, let him get a little bit more rest. Make sure that knee is fully healthy. That that Patriots defensive line doesn't need any more help as far as I'm concerned. But Barmore was limited on Wednesday and he was also limited on Thursday. Tackle Yadni Kajuste. I know I said his name wrong, but he's dealing with a calf and back injury. Limited both Wednesday and and Thursday. Running back Damian Harris, thigh injury, he was limited. Wide receiver Jacoby Myers with a concussion, he's limited. Of course, he's got a pass concussion protocol. He can't do anything about it. And then cornerback Jalen Mills with a groin injury was also limited. Fully participated was long snapper Joe Cardona, who's dealing with an ankle injury. So that's the injury report for both the Raiders and the Patriots for Thursday. We'll get another one later on this afternoon. Um, Also on Thursday, the Raiders waived guard Lester Cotton Sr. He's a guy that had a lot of hype In training camp, I know I was pretty excited about him. Preseason, pretty excited about him. Regular season came, nothing. Lester Cotton Sr., I thought the light bulb went off. I thought all of a sudden he was going to be a big-time player. Regular season, nothing. So it shouldn't be a big surprise, but the Raiders went ahead, and he was on IR, and they went ahead and waived him, so he's a done deal. So what does that mean? Who's up next? Who's going to be playing guard? Well, there's a couple different options. If Jermaine Illuminor is healthy enough to play, maybe he kicks inside the guard and Thayer Mumford goes out to right tackle. That's one option. Or maybe the new guy that they picked up from the Denver Broncos earlier this week off the practice squad, guard Natani Muti, maybe he's going to be a guy that's going to be participating on Sunday for the Raiders against the Patriots. And uh, he's a guy that everything I read, big, strong, you know, he's a, he's a mauler, but he was on the Denver Broncos practice squad. Why? Well, on Thursday, I reached out to my guy, Brandon Cristal from KOA, Colorado. Been covering the NFL and the Broncos for a very long time. He is fantastic. Had him on my radio show, and I just started like, hey, let me know something, man. Tell me about Natani Muti. He looks like he's a guy that could play. Why, you know, why did the he, he not get that burn with the Broncos? What are the Raiders getting? Well, the thing with Natani Muti, and we just haven't really seen it 
because of his body breaking down on him, mm. he has top end talent. And maybe he hasn't been as banged up in the pros as he certainly was in, in college at Fresno. But he was a guy that had a first round grade by a lot of scouts coming out. And because he missed so much game time, he just fell in the draft and fell into the Broncos lap. But then with the way the game works, you know, he's a fifth round pick. Broncos draft the third rounder. Dalton Reiser's the second rounder. They signed Graham Glasgow. They draft, you know, and that was John Elway's draft pick was Muti. So George Payton, the new GM, he drafted Luke Wattenberg last year. So Muti just ends up kind of in a numbers game. Mm. Uh, and they signed Billy Turner, who's Nathaniel Hackett, one of his favorite players. And he used to be with Denver before three years in Green Bay. So he just kind of got stuck in a numbers game. He got brought up a couple games early in the year. And then again, just the other day, and was part of a three-man rotation and I think handled himself pretty well against the Chiefs and Chris Jones. And I'm guessing that he was already on uh, Dave Ziegler and, and Jam Kelly's radar anyway, and they were just here, obviously, uh, for the second game. So they're at least checking him out pregame. He didn't he didn't dress or whatever, but uh, aware that he was playing and, and probably looked and saw that not only handled himself well, he would maybe be the right fit. So he's a, a big, big, strong dude that can go toe-to-toe with anybody. I don't know if he's the most nimble, but he's not unathletic. And if he can stay healthy and get a chance – the Raiders may have gotten a steal because if they, if they need to use him and play him, they may end up with a guy that ends up starting a bunch for him, not just this season, but but in, in years to come and won't cost very much in the short term. And so it's one of those things where he was stuck in a numbers game here, but with the right opportunity, could end up being a bona fide starter. Well, I'll tell you, the Raiders have question marks right now along the offensive line. Their guy, Alex Bars, went down last game uh, with a knee injury, and so it doesn't look like he's going to play this week. And so Moody might actually have to slide in and play as early as this week. So I saw when the Raiders picked him up, a lot of Broncos fans were saying, I can't believe he didn't get on the field here more and more. It was just, it sounds like, from what you're saying, it just sounds like it was a numbers game and, you know, potential a little bit breakdown of the body. But, you know, the skills are there if he could put them all together. Yeah, 100%. And... You know, the the opportunity because of desperation may thrust him into action maybe more than he's ready for playbook wise. Mm-hmm. But sometimes that's OK. Sometimes that's OK. Right. We've seen that the Baker Mayfield situation right. against the, the Raiders. And I'm not trying to pick on Raiders fans out there or the Raiders any more than, you know, Broncos fans like to. I'm, I'm not a Broncos fan per se. My kids are. But, right. You know, I grew up in Dallas. so I just uh, want to see good football to, to see what Baker did. That is the extreme example. But. In this new world of the NFL, where practice squads are bigger and more vets are on practice squads, and got you know Latavius Murray is a good example. Latavius Murray is on the field on a Sunday in London, and the Broncos grab him on Monday. By the time he lands, he's in Denver Tuesday, and they were ready to play him that Thursday against the Colts. They ended up not needing him, but that that's the world that we're in, where guys do get thrust into action pretty quickly. And if you've been around the league and been in a couple of offenses, you can pick some stuff up. So while I'm sure, you, you know, Josh and, and Bill Belichick famously would rip up game plans on Saturday nights and redo things. So I don't know if you want to do that week in, week out for a guy that just got there, but right. in general, not having to think too much, not having, you know, the paralysis by analysis of, Oh, we've got so much versus just simplifying it for him and making sure that the, the players on his left and his right are, letting him know exactly what he needs to do each play in the huddle and at the line of scrimmage, then maybe he just won't have to think about it too much and can come in and just play. And sometimes that can probably be a little free. Brandon Cristal is our guest here on Radio Nation Radio 920, Unnecessary Roughness. Now, I also wanted to ask you about Josh B. Daniels. You know him very well. He was obviously the Broncos head coach for a quick minute, but now he's in Las Vegas with the Raiders, and it hasn't gone that way well, right? I mean, the Raiders only have five wins so far, and a lot of Raider Nation is questioning, is this the right guy moving forward? From what you know from head coach Josh B. Daniels, how long does it take for a team to learn what he's trying to coach and the style that he's trying to coach and what he wants? Well, so I talked about he and, and Coach Belichick, and it's a Belichick thing, but ripping up game plans on Saturday nights. I remember Chad Brown, who played in the league for 15 years and, and is a CU guy and, and does radio and TV and based out of Denver. I remember him telling me years ago, because he finished his career there, about that that very thing, about tearing up those game plans. And then Pat Kerwin, who's been on Sirius XM forever, but was obviously in a bunch of front offices prior to that, so that the Patriots pride themselves year in, year out, in having the most college graduates. And while it doesn't really mean anything because you want the best football players, right. there is something to be said for guys that had the wherewithal to finish their degrees. 
And the reason I say that is because, you know, every coach says we want smart, tough guys who love football, right? It's easy to say that, but you can kind of tell if guys are relatively smart, even if they aren't necessarily book smart, are they football smart or vice versa, but smart guys aren't going to hurt you if you like the way they play football enough. And so what I think they're probably dealing with in just one aspect, and right, so there's a lot that goes into winning and losing a game and blowing leads and all that, is enough smart players and enough of their guys. And that's just going to take time. The question is, will Mark Davis give Josh and, and, and Dave the time? And Dave probably has a little more leeway than Josh does because Josh is the face of the franchise, whether he, you know, whether he likes it or not. I'm sure he likes the, the check that comes with it and, and, <laughs> right. and the credit when they win, right? Um, but so I think it's one of those that uh, – you look at it and and you just say, give if you can get through this year, try not to blow any more 13, 17 point leads. Right. It, and show that you're trending in the right direction and and that you've got things to build on. Brandon Jacobs' future becomes really interesting based on how good he's been. Uh, Derek Carr's future is interesting just because, and, and you know, that's always going to be the case unless you have Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen, you're probably not. In, or stuck with Russell Wilson as Broncos fans feel like they are right now, <laughs> right? Uh, then you're always maybe looking to potentially make a change there. So I, I think that by having that little stretch of wins in the middle of the season here recently, that probably bought Josh enough of a cushion to not have to worry about him being on the hottest seat and losing a gig. And I don't think Mark Davis wants to make another change right now. It's a sense I get uh, talking to people around the league, but I, I think over time he just needs more of his guys and he needs the, continue to work right to to learn to relate to people he can relate to football coaches and players that eat sleep and breathe football but in this modern era of, of athlete and nfl you don't always have that so right. uh so i think it's just a, a question of time brandon cristal is our guest and i'm glad you you mentioned that as we're talking about josh b daniels because i've had a lot of people question and say q i think he's a really good offensive coordinator i think he's really good at calling plays but i don't know if he's a leader of men and that kind of goes back to your comment about you know relating to people that don't eat breathe and die you know with just football yeah from what you've seen from him and what you you know the conversations that you guys have had have do you feel like he is a, a true leader of men or could be a true leader of men as a head coach has to be you know it's always tricky right when somebody's good at, at one thing mm -hmm. and calling plays in the nfl at a high level is maybe the hardest thing to do from a coaching standpoint because you it's about scoring points but that being said getting your guys to buy in getting them to stay with you getting them to believe all of that being able to relate to them knowing the names of their spouses and kids and not only where they went to college or where they went to high school and you know and knowing mm -hmm. about them and what their life was like that's a skill that i don't say can't be taught but isn't easy for everybody it doesn't come by you know not everybody comes by that naturally right. so the football part i think josh has down fine and calling plays he certainly has down but it's it is a different job and if you're as they say heavy is the head that wears the crown right if you're going to take that job then you need to do all of it that's you know nathaniel hackett here in denver has that part down perfectly the the personality part and getting along with guys and getting into and i think you saw that the other day they're down 27 nothing to the Chiefs and, and they come clawing back and have a chance to win the game late. Obviously, weren't able to do it, but it's because everybody likes Nathaniel Hackett. I'm not saying they don't like Josh McDaniels, although you do hear rumblings that some players, especially modern players, can't relate to him. Right. And I get that. And he's going to have to figure out ways to manage that. However, he gets there, I'm not sure how he, he's going to be able to do that, but maybe it's more time talking <laughs> with sports psychologists or coaches that have been successful with it and, and just kind of, it's hard to change who you are, right? And change your personality but he's going to have to do his best to, to try to do that. Or if he can just win because he has the right players, then the rest will take care of itself. Cause that's what Bill Belichick can hang his hat on is that he's got six rings. Right, exactly. Winning cures all. <laughs> no matter what, winning is the ultimate deodorant for everything. So uh, you can get away with a whole lot as long as you're winning consistently, and that's what Bill Belichick and the Patriots are doing, who, by the way, are coming to town this Sunday. Final question for you. Uh, you mentioned Dave Ziegler a little while ago, and I've only had a few chances to talk to him, but from what it seems like and from what I've, you know, the conversations, brief conversations we've had, he seems like a very, very sharp guy. I know he was there in Denver. He wasn't the GM or anything, but what do you remember about Dave Ziegler and what kind what kind of GM do you think he ultimately will be? Well, a lot of the stuff I know about him, you know, it's just one of those guys you see in passing, right? There's a whole bunch of personnel folks yeah. uh, climbing their way up, and that's where he was. Uh, but he's really well-regarded around the league, and that's why he ends up getting these GM interviews the last couple of years. And 
landing the gig with with the Raiders. I know that he really impressed two years ago when the Broncos ultimately hired George Payton. And I think that the experience of the Patriots probably helped shape the way he sees football out of Bill Belichick's eyes as best as he can. And, and so that probably is a perfect match for Josh. But he did work other places and, and understands the way the league works. And it, I, I think that is how he's regarded as a sharp mind who doesn't seem too hasty to to do things. Right. And mm. and so, you know, to, to be a little more analytical and a little more methodical in this pro- approach. And and so I'd be encouraging uh, if uh, if I'm a Raiders fan and then he hired a great guy in Champ Kelly as his right hand man. It's only a matter of time. Could be as early as this year before Champ ends up with a GM job. He interviewed for the Broncos job, he's interviewed for the Jets job uh, and maybe one or two others in there. And I think they make a good, a good kind of one, two punch because of how their personalities are. Dave's a little more reserved Champ's certainly outgoing. If you get any chance to talk to him and, and does a lot of stuff in the community and has, even when he was working his way up just as a scout, he was throwing free football camps in his hometown in, in Georgia and did it here in Denver and, and did it, uh, I want to say in Chicago as well. So nice. it's a, it's a, it's a good combo at the top. It's, it's really a good trio. If Josh can just figure out how to relate to his players well enough. And if he can do that, then I think that the ceiling is very, very high for the Raiders. The uh, one thing is they've got a division that has not only Patrick Mahomes, but Justin Herbert in it every year for a long time. And we'll see if Russell Wilson and the Broncos can get it figured out as well. Yeah, no, it's going to be interesting. The AFC West, we talked about it all offseason, that it was going to be the toughest division in football. It didn't turn out that way, but it has the potential, Brandon, to be the toughest division in football each and every year just with, like, the quarterbacks that you mentioned. And so we'll see how that shakes out. How do you think, final question for you, how do you think uh, this whole situation with Nathaniel Hackett is going to shake out at the end of the year? Is he going to be able to run it back, or is he going to be a a victim of one and done? He he certainly could get let go and, and that won't surprise anyone because of how things went really from the jump with mm-hmm. the 64 yard field goal in Seattle and the way they handled training camp, which was the same way that Sean McVay handled training camp and Matt LaFleur and a bunch of people that have been around Sean McVay approach training camp with very light practices, recovery days. Let's keep you healthy. But then it didn't work because the Broncos have been the most injured team in football. They've got the most money on the salary cap uh, on IR and and it's just snowballed. So you've lost every single starter for at least one game because Russell Wilson missed the Jets game. And with Dalton Reisner, the left guard, going out the other day, they now all 11 starters and wow. really 12 if you count Tim Patrick, who was done for the for the year. But I know there's fantasy football players out there that aren't in the playoffs because they used an early round pick on Javante Williams and haven't been able to get over that. Right. right. He got hurt in Vegas week four. So yep. the injuries on both sides of the ball, they traded Bradley Chubb away because they because of his injuries, they weren't going to give him one hundred twenty million dollars. They don't love the kid and, and hope that he stays healthy, but they weren't going to do it. So you take away their best defensive player up front or one of their two best defensive players up front. They lose one of their middle linebackers. They, they've just been banged up. Justin Simmons, who never misses a snap, missed five games. And and Ronald Darby, who they're paying ten million, the other corner, he went out early in the year. That they're injured everywhere, right. so that may be enough. And dealing with Russ is a lot, and getting on the same page, and getting him comfortable doing what he wants to do versus what you need him to do. So there's a chance because they scored twenty eight points the other day, if they can be north of twenty twenty five points in each of these final four games, and they keep playing hard, then maybe that's enough to convince the new ownership and George Payton that that he is worth keeping around. He's gonna have to tweak his coaching staff because they've got to make some changes in, in a couple spots specifically with the old line coach, but maybe he does get one more year. And then if it doesn't work, they blow it all up. They cut Russ, they trade, they fire Peyton and they get rid of Hackett. So th- there's a chance that he survives, especially if they play the way they played against the Chiefs in the final four games. Well, I'll say the final four games for Denver is going to be interesting. The final four games for the Raiders will be interesting. I mean, there's a lot of evaluations going on right now across the NFL and, of course, in the AFC West. Well, Brandon, great stuff as always. Uh, what do you got working on, man? What do you got cooking up uh, KOA Colorado that you got going on? Well, it's just about what's next for the Broncos. And, <laughs> and it was funny because you thought it'd be so stable, like, oh, richest owners in the NFL now Mm -hmm. and a new exciting young coach and you trade it for a future hall of famer. They are going to be going to the playoffs every year. And now for the seventh straight season uh, coming off that super bowl 50 win, the Broncos will not be participating. So I'll be on my same off season plan of hitting the senior bowl, hitting (laughs) super bowl, hitting the combine, you know, owners meetings. I'll I'll be at all of it. So 
uh, it'll be good to catch up with you along the way too, Q. But yeah, yeah, it's all it's now all about the Nuggets and Avs again here in Denver. And what will the Broncos look like next year? And who are who are you getting to help coach up Russ and get on the same page there? Even if you do keep Hackett, so that that's now what our focus is uh, to this point. I'll be on the same circuit sooner rather than later. And like I said, it'll be great to uh, catch up with you as well. You do a fantastic job. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon, my man. Definitely appreciate you. Thanks, you. Happy holidays to you and your listeners. So there is Brandon Cristal right there talking about Natani Muti, what the Raiders could be getting. And maybe if he ends up being a player, maybe if he shows something these last four games, I do believe he's going to get some action on Sunday, but we'll see. If he shows some of these last four games, like he said, maybe he's a guy that the Raiders could uh, have on the cheap for a while, and he can he can build with this offensive line. If it doesn't work out, then they just move on from him. But I wouldn't be shocked to see Natani Muti out there on Sunday. A couple things I want to get to real quick from NFL Communications. They always send all these little nuggets, news and nuggets for me, uh, and it's awesome. I love getting them, but it's what to look for. So this is for individuals. We'll talk about what to look for from the team in segment number two, but what to look for individually. Derek Carr and Devontae Adams got a couple cool nuggets on them. First, they were talking about Derek Carr. They say he enters week 15 with 3,117 passing yards this season. Last week became the third player in NFL history to record at least 3,000 passing yards in each of his first nine seasons, joining Pro Football Hall of Famer Peyton Manning and also Russell Wilson. Since entering the league in 2014, Carr ranks third among all players with 34,817 passing yards. All he needs is 183 passing yards against New England on Sunday. He'll become the fourth quarterback ever to record at least 35,000 passing yards in his first nine seasons. So 183 yards is what Derek Carr is looking for. And I'll tell you right now, they're going to need all those 183 yards and then some from D.C. Uh, a lot of people on my radio show on Thursday said that he needs to have that D.C. hero game. Haven't seen it yet this season. It'd be a great game to break out. Just really, you know, put a thumping on the Patriots. But they have that really strong defense. So 183 yards is what D.C. needs to become the fourth quarterback ever to record at least 35,000 passing yards in his first nine seasons. Joining Matt Ryan, Peyton Manning and Dan Marino. No, it's pretty good company to keep right there. And then the next headline was about Devontae Adams, and they titled it Ridiculous Raiders. It said, uh, wide receiver Devontae Adams ties the league lead this season with 12 touchdown receptions while ranking third with 1,247 receiving yards. With only 53 receiving yards against New England on Sunday, Adams could become the fifth player all time to record at least 1,300 receiving yards and 10 TD receptions in four or more different seasons. Joining Pro Football Hall of Famers Jerry Rice, who did in six seasons, Marvin Harrison in five, Randy Moss in five, and T.O. in four. So all those guys, Hall of Famers, and, well, you know, <laughs> Devontae Adams will be as well. Just uh, hopefully he finishes off his uh, career with the Raiders really strong, puts up some monster seasons for about, you know, four or five good years, and really just, like I said, solidifies his Hall of Fame career. But uh, not bad company, right? Jerry Rice, Marvin Harrison, Randy Moss, and T.O. Not bad company to keep at all. So that's what I got for you for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Kind of news and notes of the day. Let you know exactly what to look for from a couple individuals. Coming up in segment number two, going to let you know what you need to look for, what I'll be looking for from the team on Sunday. Before we get to that, though, do want to tell you about Tommy John and everything that they got going on. Tommy John underwear, loungewear, and pajamas. Don't make your loved ones face the dead of winter in old T-shirts, ancient underwear, and ratty sweats. Help them fight cold with Cozy. Give the gift to Tommy John. And I don't know about you, wherever you're living, but it is cold where I'm at. Man, Vegas, I don't know why. The last couple winters, it decided it wants to be as cold as Christmas, literally. And I know it is Christmas, but, man, it has been cold. So why be cold? You don't have to do that. Give your loved ones some good gear from Tommy John. They have got the most comfortable and most warm underwears and loungewears and pajamas, all that good stuff. That they got that covered. All you need to do is check them out. Matter of fact, hurry up to Tommy John's Wrap It Up sale and get 30% off everything, plus free shipping at TommyJohn.com slash locked on. Order now so your gifts arrive before the holidays. 30% off plus free shipping at TommyJohn.com slash locked on. That's TommyJohn.com slash locked on. See site for details. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. In segment number one, I told you what to talk, look for from a couple individuals, Derek Carr and Devontae Adams. Now, what will I be looking for from the Raiders in general come Sunday? Let's go ahead and jump right into it, and I'm going to start defensively. I think usually I start out with the offense. I'm going to start with the defense because they've been looking pretty good the last few games, and I know the last time we saw them, they were giving up a 98-yard touchdown drive to the Rams on Thursday Night Football with Baker Mayfield uh, behind center, so that wasn't a good lasting impression of the defense but for all for all the sense of purposes they've been actually a really good defense so let's start with the defense continue to build 
on what they've done the last few weeks. I mean, Chandler Jones is looking a lot better. Max Crosby is still getting home doing what he does. You're seeing some pressure from the middle. Uh, I mean, you're, you're seeing guys step up and make plays, and really, they've helped They've helped the Raiders stay in these games, and they've held these uh, other offenses you know, to minimal points. I thought they've done a really good job. They just didn't finish on Thursday. There's no, no way they shouldn't have finished that one on Thursday, and the offense should have helped them, but they didn't. But they really need to just continue to build on what they've done the past few weeks. And when I talk about Chandler Jones, he's going to be going up against Trent Brown. The last few games, we all know Trent Brown, but the last few games, Trent Brown off on the offensive line for the Patriots has not been very good. Chandler Jones is up to four and a half sacks, and I know that's not a lot, but saying he's got the majority of those the last two weeks, like I said earlier, continue to build on that, right? Take advantage of Trent Brown. We know who Trent Brown is. He's a very big, massive dude, but is he fast? No. Chandler Jones still has some speed. He still has some juice, man. Get around uh, get around Trent Brown and, and get Mac Jones to the ground. Harass that dude. That offensive line for the Patriots is not that good, and they have some guys that are banged up. So I think that Chandler Jones could have a, a really good day on Sunday versus Trent Brown, and I know that Trent Brown's going to want to you know play at a high level and show Raider fans and show Raider Nation who he really is because of the way he left. And, of course, Raider fans don't like Trent Brown. I don't like Trent Brown. I don't think anyone likes Trent Brown. But – you know, Chandler Jones, he could have a hell of a day, I do believe, going up against big number 77. And also, create a turnover, right? I know they don't create a bunch of turnovers, but this would be a good game to get a couple turnovers. Because, look, the, the Patriots offense isn't some prolific offense. You know, you get up to 20 points. If the Raiders score 20, 25 points, I have a fairly, really good chance, feel, that they'll win this game. The Patriots aren't just putting up a bunch of points. They just don't, right? Their offense just doesn't look that, you know, like it even has any rhyme or reason to it. Now, don't let the Raiders defense be that one defense that all of a sudden gives up, you know, 28 points and Mac Jones throws for 300 yards. Like, don't be that team, right? Go out there and, and, and show who you are, you know, led by Max Crosby and Nate Hobbs. I'd like to see some plays from Nate Hobbs, but create a turnover. Just make life difficult on that Patriots offense that's already on the struggle bus. On the other side of things, offensively for the Raiders, the offensive line is going to have their work, their hands, uh, you know, their work cut out for them on Sunday. Let's put it like that. They really are going to have their work cut out for them, man. That Patriots defensive line is no joke. That's why I say Christian Barmore could take the week off and come back in week 16 or week 17, whatever the case may be. Just don't show up week 15. They don't need any extra help along that defensive line. Those dudes get after the quarterback. Monday Night Football, they had six sacks on Colt McCoy from the Cardinals. They don't need any help. And with the Raiders offensive line being a little leaky, and especially with Alex Bars most likely being out, and who knows if Jermaine Illuminor is going to be 100% healthy, you know, you may have a guy like uh, Nati Mooney. You know, he might be out there uh, being the guy, and he's going to have to step up, or whoever's out there uh, playing that role of guard. And, of course, the tackles are going to have their work cut out for him. I mean, it's going to be a tough challenge, but that's probably where the game's going to be won or lost for the Raiders is in the trenches with that offensive line trying to protect Derek Carr. Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, that one-two punch has to continue. It really does, right? We know the numbers that Devontae Adams needs, but I'm looking at more than numbers. I'm looking at more than individual stats. I want to see Devontae Adams uh, involved in the offense early and continue it throughout the course of the game. Don't go away from it after he has a couple big catches like they did against the Rams. That never made any sense to me. A couple big catches, it's like, all right, we're done. That was a fun day for you, Devontae. We don't need, need you anymore. I mean, that's just what it felt like happened on Thursday. So Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, that one-two punch continues. And then, hopefully... If these guys are available, and I'm not 100% sure they're going to be available, it's trending that way. Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro, please show up to the front of the room. Just get involved in the offense. I'm not asking Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro to go have 100-yard games and get a couple touchdowns, but just be part of the game. You know that Bill Belichick's going to try to take away whatever the Raiders does best. So if they have Waller and Renfro out there healthy, along with Adams and along with Jacobs, that just makes that team that much better. Why not? Been out most of the season. You're fully rested. You got four games left. Go do it. Go out there and show what you got, right? You got the bag. Now go out there and show what you can do, right? Show what you can do in this offense. So Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro, just show up to the party and participate uh, and be involved in that Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs one-two punch. Because please believe, I still want it just to be that one-two punch. I just want those guys involved. They don't have to be heavy contributors, but being out there is better than not being out there because it takes attention away from Devontae and Josh Jacobs. As far as special teams goes, you know what I'm going to say, Amir Abdullah, return it if you can. Return it if you can. If they give you an opportunity to take that one back to the house, take it back to the house, my man. I think that Amir Abdullah is going to – he's got four games to take one back to the house, and I do think it's going to happen, but, you know, he's just got to go do it. He's got to be able to return it. You know, a lot of times uh, they kick the ball into the end zone. He didn't have an opportunity. If he gets an opportunity, I'm telling you, one of these four games, it's going to return all the way to the house. Daniel Carlson, 
found out that he no longer can kick off the ball with team or holding it. Uh, the NFL said, yeah, that's okay. You could do that. And then they said, no, never mind. You Raiders are enjoying doing that. You're getting more hang time. It's an unfair advantage. Never mind. You can't do that. So the NFL has changed their mind. You cannot hold the ball like they, the Raiders have been doing the last couple of games. So you won't see that anymore. So unless the, the kick coverage is, is going to be great and, and still pin the other team, the Patriots down there by the goal line, just go ahead and kick that thing into the end zone and let them start at the 25 if need be. Uh, just don't let them have a big return. They have a good special teams unit. You've got to be careful with that. They have good returners. So don't take any unnecessary chances. If you got to kick it out of the end zone, let them start at the 25. That's fine. That's better than them starting at your 25. <laughs> and then A.J. Cole, just keep doing what you do. A.J. Cole's fantastic. Uh, he's been having a hell of a season. He's been asked to do some other things than he has in the past, and he's been doing it really well. So A.J. Cole, just keep doing what you do. Overall, what I want to see from the team on Sunday Coach McDaniels, call a really clean, crisp, rhythmic game. Call the best game that he's called this season, right? Show what it could look like. Like I said, Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro show up to the party. Josh McDaniels, show up to the party. Make the calls have a rhyme and reason to it. Really want to see what Josh McDaniels could do as the head coach of the Raiders. You got four games, three out of the next four are at home. Show the home, the home fans what it could look like. So, Coach McDaniels, I'm calling you to the front of the line, too. And uh, just show up and show out. As far as I'm concerned, offensively, defensively, finish the game, play all four quarters, something that the Raiders haven't done all season. They just aren't consistent. Play all four quarters and then give Raider Nation another win at Allegiant Stadium. Got to start developing that home field advantage. Got to start winning more games at home than they have so far. So there you go. Overall, Coach McDaniels, call a clean game, offensive defense, finish the game, play four quarters and give Raider Nation another win at Allegiant Stadium. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts straight off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Before I get to that, though, I do want to tell you about Total Wine and more. This holiday season, find what you love at Total Wine and more, and they have just about anything. With so many great bottles to choose from, it's easy to find a new Cabernet or Chardonnay or the perfect gifts for everyone on your list with some help from a friendly guide. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'll do my shopping at the local liquor store. Right? I'll just go and find bottles of whatever I think everyone likes, wrap them up, call it a day, and I'm done with my shopping. Well, you can do that too, but this is even better. All the confidence of knowing you found something special for the lowest price. Love what you find only at Total Wine & More. Curbside pickup and delivery is available. That's why it's even better in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Drink responsibly. B21. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts straight up that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. As we finish off this week really strong, let's start things off with Rip City Raider. He's calling to talk about Mac Hollins. Here he is, Rip City Raider. Hey, Keith, Rip City Raider here. I have uh, been thinking a lot about Mac Hollins, and I like him as a player, but he does things that annoy me, like dancing down along the sideline as the ball's going down the field. Or it just seems like between every play, he's smiling, doing something silly. And that's fine to have a good time and stuff. But when you're down by a good amount or the game is really close and you're just having a good old time, like you're up by 40 points, it's kind of lame. And not only did I think that was lame, about dancing down the sideline when that punt was going down. They put it on Sunday Night Football's Come On Man segment, which I thought was pretty funny. Anyways, uh, thanks. Thank you so much for the call, my man. And, yeah, when you talk about Matt Collins, he's his own dude, right? He's a free spirit to the 100th degree. He's a good dude. He works hard, but he's always going to be him, right? My only issue with Matt Collins is – you could tell on a lot of routes, he's not 100% comfortable running them yet. He's not sure uh, about the playbook 100%, not like not sure where he's supposed to be. You see Derek Carr having direct traffic. I remember Josh Jacobs won a game, that Seattle game, when he uh, had that walk-off run, that long uh, run to win it against Seattle in overtime. He said he just told Mac Hollins just to line up anywhere because he didn't know where to line up. And luckily he did. <laughs> you know, they didn't have to call a timeout because Josh Jacobs ripped off that nice run to win the game. But that's the only thing I don't like about Mac Hollins is you could tell he's not 100% comfortable in his role. So we'll see what happens, but uh, he's a guy that everyone on the team really likes. He's a captain of the special teams for a reason. He's just, he's just that guy. So thank you so much for that call. I appreciate you. Next up, got a text from Pauly B in the 559. Said, Q, it's Pauly B in the 559. I've been listening to your podcast for the last four years. Raider fan here since they drafted C. Wood. You do great work, my man. I love the fact you're realistic and tell it how it is. 
Anyways, props to you for making it up the ladder. Sounds like a dream job, my guy. I'm traveling with my family and my six-year-old son to come to the game on Sunday. I wanted to ask you if there's any Raider programs that go on Friday, Saturday, or meet and greets with any of the guys or even uh, around during the game. Anything you'd recommend doing, let me know while we are there for the weekend. Let me know. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Q. That is from Polly B in the 559. And Polly B, you're in luck. Everything is going on <laughs> this upcoming weekend. Uh, matter of fact, Raider Nation Radio, we have a meet and greet with uh, Josh Jacobs at Ford Country in the Valley Auto Mall. That starts at 6 o'clock. All you got to do is bring a couple canned goods, and uh, you can go there and, and meet Josh Jacobs, take a picture with him. But register. Do me a favor. Go register at jjafc.eventbrite.com so you and your son can get a picture with uh, Josh Jacobs and get an autograph with Josh Jacobs. That's on Friday. On Saturday, uh, a lot of cats will be at the Rockstar. I won't be. I'm doing ESPN Radio Saturday night, so I won't be there. But there's a Rockstar place right across from Town Square. It's kind of near the airport as well, uh, right off the strip. You can't really miss it. Uh, and that's that's where Raider Nation goes. It's free to get in. Uh, it's family friendly, so you can bring your son. It's all good. Vinny Bonsignor will be there. There'll be a lot of members of Raider Nation. I think that starts around 5 o'clock, and then I can't tell you what they do after that because after that, you know, they, they go and get loose. I'm old, so I go home and get home. Because <laughs> then I got to be at the game early on Sunday. Uh, I'll be doing my uh, pregame pregame show from the torch on Coors Light Landing. I encourage you to get to the game. And, and if you haven't been there before, uh, go into the stadium, walk around, enjoy it, soak it in. But I'll be at the Coors Light Landing. You can't miss it. It's the big old Al Davis Memorial torches in there. Uh, there's a big bar right there. Uh, you'll see a big Raider stage. I'll be there from 10 a.m. to about 11. Uh, that's when I do my show. Then JT the Brick and Eric Allen will do their show after that, leading up to kickoff. And uh, if you want to meet Eric Allen, he's always real cool with everyone who comes up to him. He'll take a picture with him, sign autographs. Eric Allen is cooler than the other side of the pillow. So if you're looking for a really fun weekend for your son while you're in Vegas, that's 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 the places I would recommend that you go. So uh, hopefully I get to see you on uh, Sunday at the game. Uh, just come up to me. I'll be at the torch. Even after the show's over, I'll hang out at the torch for a little while, just like to meet and greet with a lot of uh, different Raider Nation members. So uh, we'll do that on Sunday. So hopefully you guys have a great time. Polly B, thanks for the text. Uh, next up, I got a call from Raider Evan. He's calling to talk about head coach Josh McDaniels, what he likes and what he doesn't like. Here he is, Raider Evan. Hey, Q, this is Raider Evan. Uh, just one final thought on the coaching. And, uh, you know, I'm a Raider for life, and uh, we're going to support uh, Josh McDaniels and support the Raiders always. Uh, but um, I'm glad that he takes responsibility. He said after the last loss, he said, hey, you want to blame somebody, blame me. What I don't like is – when you don't have accountability. They talked about, uh, they asked him questions on whether he got too conservative in the second half, and he, he didn't answer the question or kind of uh, said no. Um, yes, you did get conservative in the second half. Yes, that cost you the game. And second, they asked him on press coverage on the last play of the uh, game where uh, uh, Baker Mayfield threw the touchdown pass. Um, he said hey, there's a lot of options, and he, he, he wouldn't answer the question. Um, Denial is not just a river in Egypt. Denial is not just a river in Egypt, Josh. You need to take responsibility for your play calling, for your conservative play calling in the second half, and for uh, having press coverage on the basically with uh, the last uh, the last play of the game before the touchdown. Um, you need to take responsibility for that. Uh, they had no timeouts. You shouldn't have been playing press coverage. That was not very smart. Even Baker Mayfield said, I couldn't believe they were in press co press man coverage and uh, because it was a bad decision. So own it. Um, great that you're going to take the blame, but own your decision making because that will uh, that will be the first step towards changing your, your bad decisions into good ones. And we need you to start making some good decisions. Raider for life. Love the Raiders. Uh, good times are coming, I, I, I believe. And uh, we're going to learn and grow from this, even though I had high hopes for this year, and it's been it's been a tough year. But um, we're going to have high hopes for this team, still believe in the coaching staff, and hopefully they can learn from their mistakes. As always, thanks for all you do, Q, um, providing an outlet for Raider fans, and you do a great job. So thanks, and uh, go Raiders. Raider Evan, thanks so much for the call, my man. I do agree that the play call, especially in that Thursday night football game, pretty baffling. Right. I mean, they were giving the ball to Devontae early and then all of a sudden it was only like seven pass attempts in the second half. It just after Derek Carr threw that interception right before halftime, it just seemed like almost like Joshua Daniels didn't want him to throw the ball anymore. So I don't know. Um, as far as that that last uh, defensive drive, though, the press coverage, that's on Patrick Graham. 
that's on the defensive coordinator. I mean, he's the one calling that. Now, as the head coach, as the CEO of the team, Josh McDaniels has to say, hey, Pat, what are you doing? Get out of that, that press man coverage. Get into some zone, man. You know what we have to do? We have to make sure that the sidelines are protected and not let anyone get into the end zone. So that's what Josh McDaniels has to do. But that was, I mean, that was all Patrick Graham. And on top of that, they didn't even have Deron Harmon rotate over to help out Sam Webb. It was just like, hey, we're going to leave this undrafted free agent on the island. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either, but uh, that's something that's definitely got to be cleaned up. Thank you so much for that call, Raider Evan. I do appreciate you. I uh, just got time for a couple more. Got a text from Brent in Boston. He said, what's up, Q? Brent from Boston checking in behind enemy lines in the heart of Patriots country. This is it. My only chance of redemption for what has been a disappointing season, full of embarrassing losses, unexplainable outcomes. I have swallowed so much humble pie this year because of this Raider team that I'm still choking on it. I've listened to every Pats fan tell me how McDaniels was not the guy and he's nothing without a Belichick defense backing him up. I just have to sit there and take it all day long. How the Pats still have a spot on the sideline for him once he runs our team into the ground and comes back home to Foxborough. I need this win. I always say I bleed silver and black, but man, I'm bleeding out over here. This win could be my blood transfusion to get me through another disappointing season and maybe deal a serious blow to the Patriots' chances of making the playoffs. Keep up the hard work, keep up the good work, and happy holidays to you and the fam that's from Brent in Boston. And I can feel your pain, brother. I can read that text and feel your pain. Don't bleed out, Brent. Don't bleed out. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Don't bleed out. Uh, this could be a big statement game. And I know Josh McDaniels will not say, uh, he hasn't said uh, so far that this is a big game because it's going up against Bill Belichick. He won't say after the game that it was a big game. But I remember when he beat the Patriots when he was a Denver ho head coach and the reaction. If you haven't seen it, go back on the YouTube and look. He's fired up. He's pumped up. He wanted that win more than anything. So I guarantee you, in his heart, he really, really wants this game on Sunday. So thank you so much. For that, let's go ahead and close things out with a call from Emilio from Rancho Cordova calling to talk about this game on Sunday and why he really wants the Raiders to win this game versus the Patriots. Here he is, Emilio from Rancho Cordova. Hey, what's up, Q? This is Emilio from Rancho Cordova. I'm just calling because, uh, man, uh, hopefully we pull this off, man. Uh, the Raiders really got to win this game just to uh, keep us alive in the playoffs. And I feel like the Raiders can do it because, you know, McDaniels and uh, some, some of the players on the team used to play for the Patriots last year, so I feel like this game uh, they're going to want to play a little bit harder and maybe McDaniels might bring some more tricks out of his uh, out of his back pocket against uh, the Patriots uh, Sunday. And uh, hopefully we can pull this off, man, because uh, I really want to see us make it to the playoffs, especially after last year, man all the adversity we went through and actually making it. didn't think I, we were going to make it, but we made it. So this year, you know, we didn't have no drama or nothing, but we should make the playoffs. We, we at the beginning of the year, we would like to should make the playoffs. So hopefully we can pull it off, man. And um, one thing that I've noticed, you know, is that, uh, you know, a lot of people have been matching uh, Chandler Jones for his, you know, not producing as much sacks and stuff. But I feel like even though he doesn't produce all the sacks numbers like Max Crosby, he still does uh, contribute uh, contribute in the way of like stopping the run and and uh, knowing when to like uh, stop rushing and uh, go on to like you know like covering. Because I feel like that's one thing that in Yaku Gakwe did do like he. You know, he, he would just tune his ears back and go for his quarterback, but he would never, like, you know, be smart and kind of like, oh, you know, they're going to run a screen and he try to stop the running back or something. I feel like Chandler brings that uh, that edge, brings that uh, that mobility to where he, he can pin his ears back, but then he's smart enough to know uh, when to play coverage and uh, stop the screens or whatnot, you know. So uh, that's what I thought. Um, I don't know what you think about that. And uh, keep doing your thing, Q. Um, go, go Raiders. Hopefully four in a row, baby. Thank you for the call, my man. And I want the Raiders to win the game just to see the Raiders win a game, right? I'm not worried about the P word. I'm not worried about, you know, them getting into the postseason. It's not about that. After that ugly loss they had last week, and they've had, you know, multiple ugly losses this, this season, you know, giving up double-digit leads four times already this season, I just want to see them get a win for them and then worry about next week's game next week. And then the week after that, after that, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just want to see them put it together. 
and start looking like a competent team, a team that once you get a lead, you know, hey, this game is over. This team is going to win. Like I was watching Thursday Night Football, and once the Niners got up on Seattle, I told the wife, I was like, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. They got them, right? I mean, it was no, it was no even question. Once they got up on the board, I was like, oh, it's a done deal. Seattle's going to uh, unravel, and San Francisco's going to beat the brakes off them. And I know it got a little bit closer towards the end, but did it really? No, not really. So, you know, that's, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. As far as Chandler Jones, he's been a disappointment, but he's working hard. I know every player in the locker room has said that, and every coach has said that. He's one of the hardest working dudes. The ro- results just weren't there. He's up to four and a half sacks, so let's see what he does the rest of the way. And again, all the players, all the coaches have all said how much he works and how much he means to the team. So uh, when all everyone says it, it's hard for me to go against it, even though I'd like to see more numbers as far as the sacks, pressures, forced fumbles, you know, stuff like that. That's what I want to see more of, but I get it. And the players and the coaches seem to be all aboard with one Chandler Jones. So that's all I got time for on today's show. It's going to do it for me until Sunday. And then, of course, we'll be back here on the Lockdown Raider podcast on Monday. But again, I'll be at Allegiant Stadium bright and early. Show starts at 10 a.m. at the Torch. So if anyone's around, come on by, say what's up. I think they open the doors at like 1030. I don't think they open it till about 1030, but I'm not 100 percent sure. So it's right around that time, either 10 or 1030. Uh, just come on up to the Coors Light Landing. That's where everyone hangs out, takes pictures, says what's up, meets and greets with other people from Raider Nation. It's just it's a fun place to hang out prior to the game. So I'll be there and uh, hopefully uh, I'll be in the locker room following the game, talking about uh, a happy locker room with a bunch of players that are celebrating a big victory and the Raiders improve to six and eight on the season. But we'll talk about it on Monday. Raider Nation, have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the game on Sunday. And like I said, we'll be back to talk about whatever the results are. Win, lose, tie, you know how we do. We do it every day, Monday through Friday, here on the Lockdown Raiders Podcast. Thanks again for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the Lockdown Raider Podcast free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Thanks to my guy, Ari. So until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, hopefully the Raiders will do this on Sunday. Just win, baby.